Hi everyone. Um, today we are going to take a look at this short piece, um, Harrison Bergeron. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. It's by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Um, I'm actually going to do something a little different this time. I'm going to do a dry read. I haven't read this story and um, I'm going to do that because I think sometimes it's important for you to see what um, a reader does when they're unfamiliar with a piece of text as we go. So I have all of my colors ready to go. They're open. Um, I am looking like always for things like repetition. I'm looking for text positioning. Um, I'm looking for just different things that kind of stand out and shock me as a reader. I'll probably stop every couple paragraphs here and you know put a note out to the side as to what I'm reading about so that I can make sure that I'm on topic. Um, but those are the strategies I'm going in with. Um, I'll kind of talk through again as I go, like I usually do, and um, let's go ahead and get started. So the year was 2081, and everybody was finally equal. 2081, so we know we're in the future. Everybody was finally equal, so I'm wondering if the writer is insinuating that we're not equal now. So they weren't only equal before God and the law. They were equal in every which way. Nobody was smarter than anybody else. Nobody was better looking than anybody else. Nobody was stronger or quicker than anybody else. All this equality was due to the 211th, 212th, and 213th amendments to the Constitution and to the unceasing vigilance of agents of the United States Handicapper General. Okay, so my question that I'm having is how um, can they ensure everyone is equal because even being born like some of us sometimes have different um, abilities or things that we study or i don't know i don't i'm trying to figure out and then 211 12 and 13th amendments to the constitution i think uh, history is not always my strongest but what do we have 30 some odd now so in, in the last according to this it's 2017, so in about, what, that many years, 70 years or so, they added on, you know, 170 amendments. Like, that seems like a lot. I wonder what happened that started to make it so that everything had to be equal. Nobody was smarter, nobody was better looking, nobody was stronger, quicker, et cetera. So how are they doing that? And what happened that made us need another 150 plus amendments to the Constitution in order to ensure it. So. Some things about living still weren't quite right, though. April, for instance, still drove people crazy by not being springtime, and it was in that clammy month that the H.G. men took George and Hazel Bergeron's, uh, Bergeron's 14-year-old son, Harrison, away. Why? And I love that they bring in the month of April because April is kind of one of those months that it's like, ah, too cold. Ah, not cold enough. Ah, it's raining. So I can see that. That's kind of funny. And HG, I'm assuming, has to do with this United States Handicap General. Uh, I'm assuming that that's their, their abbreviation for that group. It was tragic, all right, but George and Hazel couldn't think about it very hard. Hazel had a perfectly average intelligence, which meant that she couldn't think about anything except in short bursts. And George, while his intelligence was way above normal, had a little mental handicap radio in his ear. He was required by law to wear it at all times. He had a mental handicap radio in his ear. He was required to wear it at all times. It was tuned in to a government transmitter. Every 20 seconds or so, the transmitter would send out some sharp noise to keep people like George from taking unfair advantage of their brains. So already as a reader, I'm starting to get into this idea, probably dystopian. Um, I'm kind of like, this is making me wonder like, are we thinking like how far is too far? Like as far as like, control like you know we want everyone to be equal but where is that line um you know and this of course is an extreme example of how they're interpreting that idea of um you know equality so george and hazel were watching television there were tears on hazel's cheeks but she had forgotten for the moment what they were about That's sad on the television screen were ballerinas 
A buzzer sounded in George's head. His thoughts fled in panic like bandits from a burglar alarm. That's right. Sad that it's happening, but what a great um, simile. See how it has the word like there? That means that it's a simile because it's saying that his panic is leaving him as fast as burglars leave uh, when they hear, or bandits leave when they hear burglar alarm. That was a pretty, that was a real pretty dance. That dance they just did, said Hazel. Huh? said George. That dance, it was nice, said Hazel. So it's like their son was just taken away. Son taken, and they're just talking about a dance. Maybe that's just showing just how much whatever's happening is um, either normal or is now being controlled, that they don't have anything to go with, that their kid was just taken and yet, huh. Yep, said George. He tried to think a little about the ballerinas. They weren't really very, uh, they weren't really very good, no better than anybody else would have been anyway, because everyone's equal. They were burdened with sash weights and bags of bird shot, and their faces were masked so that no one, seeing a free and graceful gesture or a pretty face, would feel like something the cat drug in. George was toying with the vague notion that maybe dancers shouldn't be handicapped, but he didn't get very far in it before another noise in his ear radio scattered his thoughts. So as soon as they start to get the idea that they're thinking for themselves, and it's okay for some to be better at things than others, this radio sound goes off. So I wonder if it's controlled or like earlier it said something about every 20 seconds. I wonder if it like every 20 seconds it happens or kind of where this is going with that. George winced. So did two out of the eight ballerinas. That's one fourth. I wonder if it means anything. I don't know if it means anything, but two out of the eight is one fourth. Hazel saw him wince. Having no mental handicap herself, she had to ask George what the latest sound had been. Okay, so he's given a mental handicap because his intelligence is above average, but since hers is average, she doesn't get the mental handicap. So um, they're not worried about someone with average intelligence because, well, that's what they want everyone to have is average intelligence. So. Sounded like somebody hitting a milk bottle with a ball, with a ball peen hammer, said George. I think it would be real interesting hearing all the different sounds, said Hazel, a little envious. All the things they think up, um, said George. I think not. Only if I was a handicapper general. You know what I would do, said Hazel. Hazel, as a matter of fact, bore a strong resemblance to the handicapper general, a woman named Diana Moon Glampers. If I was Diana Moon Glampers, said Hazel, I'd have chimes on Sunday, just chimes, kind of in honor of religion. I could think if it was just chimes, said George. That's a cool, so like, is it Hazel's intelligence or is it just the fact that, I mean, so the sounds are super annoying. You know, and as a reader, I'm thinking like, they're spending an awful lot of time talking about um, Hazel and George sitting on the couch, talking about these buzzings in the ears to being in control of their, um, intelligence. So I feel like all of this means more, but I'm not really sure how yet. Like I'm wondering how long they're going to sit and have a conversation about the buzzing noises and not talking about, for that matter, the fact that their kid was just taken. And will we figure out why he was taken? Well, maybe make them real loud, said Hazel. I think I'd make a good handicapper general. Good as anyone else, said George. Who knows better than I do what normal is, said Hazel, because she's normal. Right, said George. He began to think glimmeringly about his abnormal son, who was now in jail, about Harrison, but a 21-gun salute in his head stopped that. Boy, said Hazel, that was a doozy, wasn't it? So he must have reacted. He must have jumped. I wonder if she says that every time something happens, because that would be, I think, hard to be married to someone for a really long time who calls attention to it every time it happens. It was such a doozy that George was white and trembling, and tears stood on the rims of his red eyes. Two of the eight ballerinas had collapsed to the studio floor, were holding their temples. So, oh my word. So, two out of the eight ballerinas, I can't spell ballerinas apparently. B-A-L-L-E-R-I-N. 
ballerinas have the ear thing too. So there, you can see their reactions at the same time. So they're not just watching these ballerinas, but Kurt Vonnegut put it in there specifically to show that it's not just George that this is happening to, but all these same sounds are happening to the people who have above average intelligence, no matter where they are. So two of the eight ballerinas um, fell the last time that the, the noise was made, and then two of the eight ballerinas just went down. Um, they collapsed on the studio floor holding their temples. So that is making me think that two of the eight ballerinas are there. And so it's showing that everybody has this thing. Okay, I'll grab another color just to sort out here. All of a sudden, you look so tired, said Hazel. Why don't you stretch out on the sofa so as you can rest your handicap bag on the pillows, honey bunch? She was referring to the 47 pounds of bird shot in a canvas bag, which was padlocked around George's neck. Go on and rest the bag for a little while, she said. I don't care if you're not equal to me for a while. So if he's having to carry around a birdshot bag, like, is this about weight? Like, is this to an equalizer for weight? Like, the birdshot makes someone who is, um, you know, below the average weight of society makes them equal now to that. So that's what I'm thinking. George weighed the bag with his hands. I don't mind it, he said. I don't notice it anymore. It's just a part of me. You've been so tired lately, kind of worn out, said Hazel. If there was just some way that we could make a little hole in the bottom of that bag and just take out a few of them lead balls, just a few. Two years in prison and $2,000 fine for every ball I took out, said George. I don't call that a bargain. Ooh, this is that harsh um, consequence, really. Just for removing, huh. If you could just take a few out when you came home from work, said Hazel. I mean, you don't compete with anybody around here. You just sit around. If I tried to get away with it, said George, then other people get away with it. And pretty soon we'd be right back in the dark ages again with everybody competing against everybody else. You wouldn't like that, would you? Dark ages again. I wonder if they're referring to like now because we're competitive by nature. And uh, I wonder, you know, we're in 20, what was it? 2080, 2081, and so maybe we're the dark ages right now, and that's why they've had so many amendments is because they had to come out of it. I'd hate it, said Hazel. There you are, said George. The minute people start cheating on laws, what do you think happens to society? If Hazel hadn't been able to come up with an answer to this question, George couldn't have supplied one. A siren was going off in his head, so like he really can't think too deeply about much. So, I mean, is it good to have society of like non-thinkers, really? You know, we all just kind of go around, you know, floating through this fog of, you know, oh, as soon as I have a thought, there it goes. And, you know, is that kind of what, you know, you think about technology today, um, you know, the, the email beeps or our text message goes off and it's like before we can actually sit and really think deeply about something, we're needed for something else or our video game is calling or whatever it is, but something drives us away. And so is that good for our brains or not? And like, this reminds me of research I've read. Anyway, reckon it'd fall all apart, said Hazel. What would, said George blankly. Society, said Hazel uncertainly. Wasn't that what you just said? Who knows, said George. The television program was suddenly interrupted for a news bulletin. It wasn't clear at first as to what the bulletin was about since the announcer, like all announcers, had a serious speech impediment. For about half a minute and in a state of high excitement, the announcer tried to say, ladies and gentlemen, he finally gave up and handed the bulletin to the ballerina to read. So the announcer, like all announcers, had a serious speech impediment. So he had difficulty saying his words or certain sounds and things like that. And so, all announcers have to have a speech impediment. And so he gave it to the ballerina to read. Um, hopefully he didn't give it to one of those two who are going to hear a sound here soon and then struggle. So um, I will be, uh, video number two, we'll get hopefully the last few pages and um, we'll be right back.